Uh, today I'm going to be disassembling the M4 platform. Uh, I need to give this a good service inside. It's not been done for a while. And um, it's just going to give you an idea how you should be taking it apart, which parts to clean, where to lubricate and what to look out for. So we'll jump straight into it. First thing we need to do is take this pin out here. So we'll just pop that out. Pull the front end off and that's going to take your front end and your hop assembly and your barrel out as well. So they can go to one side for now. We're not going to be looking at that just yet. So now we have this, this section here. Next part is we need to remove the rear um, the rear hand, hand grip. So not the grip, the stock. We need to remove the stock. This is a standard M4 one. So that's what the standard one would, would be like. And obviously I've just changed this out for a stubby one. So it's the same process if it's standard or you've got something like this. If you look down the tube, down there, there'll be a screw. More often than not, it is a Phillips screw. So you need quite a long screwdriver to get all the way down there. And we're just gonna undo that. So I'll do it on this one. And you can see the screw inside there. So we're just going to whip that out. So, and just pull the rear stock off. So all that, that would just come off there, if that was a normal one. It'd just be on there, with a plate behind it, which holds the wires and everything in place. But like I say, I've changed it out, this is what it would be like. So just pull that off. Put all that to one side. Next, we're going to take the motor out. So if you flip your gun up, you should have a screw there and a screw there. Go ahead, remove those. <clears throat> Mine's a 2 mil Allen key, but yours could be a crosshead again. Not every gun is exactly the same, so. Okay, so once you've took them out, just set this to one side. And then we can take the wires off. Just pop them off. You'll have a black one and a red one. Positive, neutral. Just whip them off like that. And then we're just going to lift up the motor. So make sure you put your motor somewhere where it's not going to get any debris or it's not going to attract any iron filings or anything like that so I'm just going to put mine up here stuck to my wall and it can't go anywhere it's nothing around it to damage it next we'll have some bolts inside your handguard just go ahead and move those whichever ones they are crosshead or allen keys just whip them two off Once you've done that, just lift it up, gently pull out the wires, like so, and then put that to one side now. Now you should have something like this. So the next thing we need to do is we need to remove the release, which is for your bolt. So to do that, sometimes it's a small one mil, one and a half mil Allen key. In this instance, it's a small crosshead. So we can just push down, undo that. When it's undone enough, it'll just pop off like so. And there's a spring as well. Lift your gun and the other end, we need to push that out as well. Like so. Or I can go to one side. Next. We need to remove this section here and there's normally just a small retaining rod that you just push out 
like so. You'll have that, and then that just lifts out as well. On the other side of the gun, just push down that part there, and that will release this to come out. And then just let this bit come out as well. So that can go there, that's all we're done with. Now we've got a pin here to push out. So it depends which way it's pushed in. Push it out whichever way it needs to come out. You'll know because if you start pushing it, you'll see the splines. If you see the splines, you're pushing it the right way. Put that to one side, that's done with. There would be a bolt in here as well. Um, I don't use it because I run that weird stock and the stock doesn't allow me to have that bolt in which is why it's not in there. So once you've got all that removed and everything else, you're gonna grab your gearbox and you're gonna pull it up at the front a little bit, pull it forward and up at the back, like that. So that case can go to one side, we don't need that. Now we're gonna start disassembling this. I call this my uh, franking gun because it's got all spare parts that I've had lying around and I just made a gun up to for fun whilst I was in lockdown. So we're going to start taking these out. Oh, before we do that, if you have got a quick release spring, take it out. If you haven't, once you start started undoing these screws, just put some inside it, like so, and just push down so the spring can't just flip out. And this one, I'm quite lucky because I have a quick release spring. Which I'm just going to take out now. Put that to one side and carry on. Okay, so once you've removed all your screws and bolts, we're going to carefully lift the gearbox apart. Now when we do this, we've got to be careful of these bearings. Obviously there's all shims inside, so we don't want to get all those mixed up if it's been shimmed up. If it needs shimming up, don't worry about it. If this one is shimmed, um, I've done it myself, it's absolutely perfect. There's no movement and it's all freely moving. with next to no force. So once we've done that, I'm going to gently lift up, like that. Turn it over, take your anti-reversal latch out, set that to one side. Carefully remove your cylinder, your piston, and all that good stuff. So to do that, we're just going to take off Let me see, yeah. So we're just going to take off this spring here. Like so, and gently lift all that up. Like that. So that can go to one side and we're going to start by removing the bevel gear which is this one make sure your shims stay on the top and then if there's any shims in your box underneath just grab those out and just stick them on like that and then what i've got here there's a piece of paper with all my gears labelled out, so I'm just going to put on how it shows on the picture, take my shims off, put them either side, so I can clean them. So that's your bevel gear. Next we're going to take out the sector gear, uh, which is this one here. So we're going to remove that, make sure we grab all of them shims. And put them on the appropriate place where they need to be. Like 
like that. These are Rocket Gear 16 to 1, which I have short stroked by two teeth, maybe three teeth. I can't quite remember, it's been a while. So you can see that it's been short stroked across there. Yeah, so we've got 13 teeth left, so it's, I've short stroked it by three. On there. Boom. So put that where it needs to be, which is on your sector gear piece of paper. Next, we're going to remove the spur gear, which is this one here. All the shims are still on there. Rocket gears. 16 to 1, basically the knockoff of SHS. Once we've done that, we can start by removing the trigger mechanism and all that stuff in there as well. Now oh, I have got some shims in here. These shims need to go in the right place, which are on the sector gear on this side. Come on. There we go. Okay. So the bearings I've got in this are the ultimate ASG ultimate bearings. Um I just like them. I've never had a problem with them, so that's why I use them in my builds. So we're going to remove this trigger by lifting up. Like that. Grab your spring. I can go to one side. And then we need to remove the, um, the electrical trigger unit. Otherwise known as the ETU. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but... Let me just put that back in and show you. What I like to do with the wiring, because it is a bit fiddly, is I put some bits of rubber just in between and it holds the wires from popping out while you're trying to put everything together. So it's just a small piece of rubber in there and it holds it all together. It's just something small, but it will help. So now we just lift that, like so. Be careful not to damage any wires, lift it up. And that can go to one side. We don't need to touch that. That's just the wiring. Now I do want to swap this out for an electronic, uh, an ET, a proper ETU, <clears throat> a micro one, and I'll do it eventually. But at the minute, I've got other things going on, so it's not top of my list. This is just a backup gun to use if I break one. So. You would then go ahead and clean all of your parts, clean the gear case, your gears and all the rest of it, which I'm going to do right now. Remember when we've got our sheet of paper like so, I've drawn on here bevel gear, spur gear, sector gear, so you can remove your shims and just put them either side of your drawer in. Like so, and then the drawing corresponds to your picture. Like that. So you know these shims are from this side, these shims are from this side. Just so we don't get it all mixed up. So I'm going to go ahead, clean my gearbox, clean my gears, and then I'll come back and we'll clean, start cleaning the cylinder piston and all that good stuff. I'll be back in a minute. To clean it, before I go, I'm just going to use some rubbing alcohol. It's good stuff. It gets it nice and clean. And then we're going to use a nice clean cloth just to dry it all off. If you've got a couple of brushes, it's going to help you in this, um, in this case. So what I use is, I can find them. Where are they gone? Ah, there they are. So I've just got a few different brushes, some toothbrushes, quite a stiff brush, some small brushes. It just gets in all the little places.
Okay, so I've cleaned all my gears. My gearbox is all nice and clean. We're just going to go and strip this down to give this a nice little clean now. It's dead simple. Pull the tappet plate and the nozzle. Drop that in there. The tappet plate, you can give a tiny, you know, give it a little bit of white, but it, it doesn't, generally, it doesn't really get very dirty. If it is a bit dirty, just give it a wipe and that's more than enough. Put that to one side. Now we're going to pull the piston out, which is this one. It's really dirty. This is why I wanted to give it a clean. You can see how dirty that is. If I just rub my finger over that lot. So remove the O-ring from the the piston head, uh, chuck that in. We've got the piston, which has been short stroked as well. And I have to shave this gear, this piston tooth here, at a bit of an angle. If you can see that. Just so the sector gear passed, it passed over it. Put that in there. And you can pull your cylinder head out that's really dirty give that a good clean in there as well and the cylinder as well so the cylinder is a it's an s uh what is it it's an asg evo cylinder but it's just a standard one out of the evo and all i had to do was trim the end down that's why it's you can see it's shining so I sanded the whole front end down for it to fit inside the gearbox it was something like half a millimetre right to take off but I wanted this one instead of the standard one chuck all that in there and we're going to give that a nice good clean as well so I'm going to clean that and then I'll come back to you okay so they're all nice and clean now um, with this piston it is a Swiss cheese piston which means it's got these holes that have been cut out it's for weight reduction uh, it just helps return the pistol back, uh, piston back in that, and um, yeah, it's supposed to be a better one. Not 100% sure how, uh, but the weight reduction obviously does something, so keep using it. Right, now we're going to need some silicon gun grease, and we're going to need some gun grease for your gears which is LT2 and it says on there perfect for your gears so your o-ring off your piston head I'm going to put a bit of this one on which is the silicon gun grease and just rub a bit on there like so and put it back over your piston like so it should be a bit looser like that it should have it should be a bit oversized for what you need then we're going to put some inside our cylinder just rub it all the way around inside like that Get it nice and well lubricated don't need loads but we need a good cover on the whole of it Once we've done that, we can put our cylinder head back in. So that just flips in, just like that. And then we can put our piston back in. Careful not to trap the rubber. That's got a really good seal. Which is what we want. I want it to have a good seal. And that's that section pretty much done. Now we can bring a gear case back into play. First thing we're going to do is put our wiring back in. That just sits in there like so. Feed your wires back to the way that they come out. I'll show you mine when I've done it.
So they're all going to be seated in like so. I've got my small bit of rubber retaining it all in place. Now we can start to go ahead and put our gears back in. So follow your shape of the diagram. Put your shims on. Just be careful because they do they do stick to you. Um, before we do that, I should have said this before, we're gonna put a bit of bearing oil on our bearings. So just get a little dob like that and just put a blob on each one. That keeps them nice and lubricated. So your spur gear. nice and then we're going to get a bit of our gun grease and we're going to put some on our bevel gear so just grab a little brush we don't need loads of this because we don't want it flicking around all over the gearbox so just brush them on Nice even coat on all the teeth, like so. Now I can put a bit on the sector gear on these teeth here. Like so, now we're going to put our shims back on the bevel gear, so follow your shape again, your diagram, put them on like so, like that, and then that goes like that. Next we have got our sector gear, so we're going to do the same again, get a bit of grease, Put it on there, make sure you get the right grease, don't choose anything. It has to be gear grease because it's quite thick so it doesn't flick off everywhere. Go ahead, just keep putting that. A nice thin layer, not excessive. We don't want it to be excessive. Now we're going to follow our diagram again. Put all our shims on. Like so, and then we can put this back in to the box, like that. Right, get any excess grease off your hands that you might have. Now we're going to insert our piston and cylinder and all that stuff. So to do that, we need the nozzle. Put a tiny bit of grease, normal grease, not the gear grease, silicon grease, around your cylinder head, and then just put your nozzle on like that. It's just going to help lubricate that as well. Then we're going to get a tappet plate, attach the tappet plate like that. And we're going to put all of that in one into our gearbox. Make sure your teeth are facing the right way on your piston. 
and then we're going to hook on our spring which is just there so to do that get a pair of tweezers and just hook it on to your bar just on there like that Okay, now we're going to put the trigger back in. Dead simple. Just put your spring on like so. This arm here hooks around that part there, and that pin goes in there like so. Can be a bit fiddly. It is. Just put it in loose like that. Just grab a pair of long nose pliers and just hook, hook this over the body. Like so. So that's all back in. Well, that's back in place. Put them shims back on there. Like so. And we're all ready to put the shell back together. So again, get your, your bearing oil. And we're just going to put a bit just on these bearings as well. Just one, one blob on each. Like that. Just make sure everything's in. Just go through it all. So we've got cylinder head, cylinder, piston, piston head, nozzle, tappet plate, tappet plate spring, your electronic unit, your sector gear, your spur gear, your bevel gear, all your shims, your wiring and your trigger. One thing I forgot, this is why we check, is the anti-reversal latch. So to put, put that in, we're just gonna, in fact, to put that in, it's easier to take the bevel gear out. Put your anti-reversal in. Like that, so it should look like this. And then we're just going to spin that round like that and put our bear, uh, bevel gear back in. Like that. <clears throat> okay, just checking everything again. We've got everything. We're happy now. Everything's good. Looks good, it's all lubricated. Time to put this back together. So I'm going to offer that over the top, like that. If you push in your nozzle, it's going to help get it all back together. So that's gone back relatively easy, actually, easier than normal. So once you've done that, we are just going to put our screws back in. Okay, so we've got all our screws back into the box. Now we're going to put the spring and guide in. Like I say, this is a quick release spring. If it isn't, then it's a bit of a pain. That's very unfortunate. Rotate it 90 degrees, <clears throat> and that's it. Now, I'm just going to show you quickly how to get it all back together, and I'll go from there. So first of all, you want your body. We're going to put the wire through the back. Well, like so, motor wires go through the grip, which will be there, 
and then we're going to put the trigger through the hole push down and then just literally push it all together like that now we can get this pin back in to do that just push it in push it in flat like that now we're going to get the um, <clears throat> the bolt release back in place so we need that that part there which is going to go in there like so push that down and then from the other side put your bolt release in and then put your little retaining rod in just in there like that that's all back together now we're going to put the mag release in so to do that from this side drop that in turn it over get your spring put your spring in this part here hold it down with one finger and screw it together with the other done that's your mag release back in next we're going to put the hand grip the uh, the grip back on so to do that there's two holes one's for your positive one's for your negative wires drop them in through there like that feed that up and then the screws I've already left in there which is going to tighten those screws up Okay, once they're up, grab your motor, just gonna drop your motor back in, like that, attach your wires, so red goes onto the red, you'll have a little dot on one of these stalks which shows you the red, a negative goes on obviously the opposite one, grab your base plate, Put your base plate on, like so. <clears throat> Do then two screws up. One in there. One in here. Okay, so once they're in, it's time to give the gun a quick test to make sure everything's working on it. So I'm just going to go and grab a battery and I'll be back. Okay, so we're just going to give it a quick test, make sure it's all running. It's good pressure. one's great so once we've done that we can then go ahead and reassemble the last parts but I'm going to do that in a smaller video because I'm going to show us how to disassemble and clean our hop unit barrel and all that stuff so I'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching guys hope you found it helpful and I'll see you on the next one